Right, good day everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Uh, a little bit of a different setting today. We're going to do a uh, do a little video on we're going to we're going to form some brass. We're going to make some uh, brass for a 300 blackout. That's a bit it's a bit thin on the ground at the moment here in Australia, and when you can get it, it's almost a king's ransom. So um, next best thing, make it. And basically, a 300 blackout is a cut down two three three. You see that? Yep, just a, basically a cut down two to three. Okay? So, and what we, we can cut these, um, and that's the way you basically, we cut them off, we'll cut them off just below, just below the shoulder, cut them off about there, and uh, you basically uh, form the neck by running them through a set of. 300 blackout dies. Now I'm using the Lee Pace set of dies, the three die set, which I've got for all my calibers. No issue with Lee dies whatsoever. Now we're gonna cut these one of two, with two different ways. We can use a drill. So we put the, uh, put the empty shell in. We use our little pipe cutters, little tiny pipe cutters. And to do that, we're gonna uh, make little spaces that we put in the drill. And that's just little bits of brass like I've flattened out, like the necks that I've cut off, and it just pokes enough of this enough of the uh, brass out of the uh, uh, out of the drill chuck just to cut it off at the right length. And we'll cut it off with that. Or we've got a little mini drop saw or chop saw, whatever the hell you want to call it. And uh, well I haven't got a jig for it so I'll uh, I'll make it up as I go along. Alright so we'll uh, measure onto a trim length. Now the, the trim length for these things uh, you, according to, to Nick Harvey, and I've, have, I've always used his lengths, and I've got no uh, no issue with that. Your trim length is a range of 34.62 millimeters to 34.7, with an absolute maximum case length of 34.85. Now, it's uh, I always try and trim them as short as I can because that way they will fit in any rifle. Um, you start you start trimming it up to the maximum trim length when they when they for your fire them when they form, the brass expands a bit, you may not be able to get it out, you might run into problems. And uh, I don't really want to do that, particularly out in the field, so um, err on the side of caution. Make them a little bit short, um, and, and that way they will fit in any rifle, you'll have no trouble cycling them, etc., etc. So all right, um, I'm gonna shut the camera down, and I'm gonna start um, setting this sort of stuff up. Righto, we're back. Okay, we've got a drill, just turn on its upside down on its ass there. And we've got, you could call it a space, and what I've done is just the next I've chopped off some other ones, and I've just flattened them all down to different lengths, and that it will just sit underneath the um, underneath the empty cartridge, and it will just push it up enough just to give us the correct length to uh, to cut to uh, chop it off. That's the theory, anyway. So get him in there, so he sits upside down in the drill. There he is. Get a cutter. Use our big one, in there like, like thus, tighten him up, hold him down, there he is, there he is, easy as you like. Now here we'll measure him at 35, 35.1, that sounds a bit long, but what we'll do is we'll have to, uh, at 35.1, we'll uh, have to, uh, You'll give that a chamfer before we put it through the dies, and then we'll um, put it through the dies, bump the shoulders, that should shrink it a little bit, then we'll uh, trim it with the, uh, the trimmer. So we'll, we'll, do another, we'll do another one of these, just to see, make sure we've got consistent length that way. Cutter. Yeah, and you just tighten him up till he just bites into the brass there like that. There he is. Oh, that one's come out square, but I reckon we can fix that. Put him through, uh, put him through the dies and what have you. Yeah, thirty-five and a bit. So sometimes they do that for some reason. I don't know why. They just do. Probably, probably me just do not get, not getting it in the drill bit straight in the chuck straight. Oh come on. Okay, something's happened to our spacer. There he is. That's better.
hole in there. And he's at 35.3. So again, a little bit long, but we can fix that with the trimmer. That's all right. And uh, so we'll go the other way. We'll go with the chopper now. All right, now our other way here is we're going to use this little mini drop saw I've uh, picked up off Flea Bay or uh, drop saw, chop saw, whatever they call them. And like, it's not, you're not going to build a house with this thing because it's all plastic casing and that's all sort of that hard plasticky shit. But for what we want to do here, cutting brass, very light duty, so uh, we should be right. So we'll give it a go. Now, I've, I must admit, I've mucked around with this. And in saying this, in saying that before I... Um, I should have mentioned earlier what I've done with all of these uh, these cases. I've uh, I deprimed them. Obviously, they're all deprimed, and um, these are this is Frontier brass. Is that focusing? These are Frontier brass, and I think they've got a bit of a crimp in them. So I got rid of that, and um, I've cleaned them all. I've done all the primer pockets and all that. So we're, we're good to go. We're good to go. Uh, so with these, I, I must admit also I mucked around this later. These um, little chop saws, they've got a little, like a, like they're not a jig, they're more just a, just a clamp in there. And I worked out before, if I line the uh, extraction ring up, just with the back of that. Now don't, don't start this with, don't start the saw with your finger underneath it. God, if I have to tell you people that. So how's that gonna go? Oops. There you go, a little chopping blade there. I think, I still think that that's going to be, oh, that should be okay. We'll see how we go for length. Actually, I'm going to just push him back a little bit, make him a whisker longer. A whisker, yeah. Yeah, he should be right. So just the front of the extraction ring. We'll start him up. There he goes. That's a nice flush cut. 34, 34.86. So that's not too bad. I, I'm happy with that. Um, you can actually buy a jig for these things um, where you, 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 you boot that little clamp thing. It comes out with that bolt. They're like a, they're a, it's a jig you can buy, and I think you get them on Amazon. They're about 60 bucks. Yeah, you can if you like. I don't care. Not my thing. So I'm going to do these, I've got about four or five to go, and uh, I'll do these and I'll come back to uh, when we're at the next stage. Rightio, we've, um, we've chopped all them off, and we've uh, cleaned up a bit of the, uh, the necks and all that sort of thing, and put them in the, the shit brass bin. Now we give these a shampoo because they're going to go through the dies next, and you don't want daggy bits going through your dies, you want to scratch your dies, so real easy, RCBS, chamfering, deburring tool, inside, do the outside. Easy. Easy peasy. And uh, that's just looking after our dyes and, you know, doing all that. Uh, you go a bit square, we might cut me. And it gives you a good, uh, it gives you a good uh, chance just to make sure you've done everything right. And, you know, and if, if you bugger one up, I mean, it's two to three brass. It's as cheap as chips. You know, you can even... You can even buy it for, God, P PPU brass. I think you pay about thirty-five dollars a hundred for it. If you hunt, if you hunt around, but a lot of us would uh, would know someone who doesn't reload it. You can almost, you can almost get it for nothing, you know. So, and this is a good way to to save a bit of money. So you're not um, going out and buying uh, buying this brass that you when you find it, you you really got to basically mortgage your children to buy it. In a lot of cases. And um, uh, cases you were going to chuck away. You would have chucked away because um, the necks were cracked and all that sort of thing. We chuck away. It doesn't matter. You don't need the necks. You're chopping that off. So, you know, you're, uh, you, you're, giving your ca you're giving your cases a second lease of life, if you like, for want of a better expression. And um, if you do it like this it, and you don't really pick them up, it doesn't matter because, A, you've got them for nothing. And... You will use a lot of these, uh, use a 3 a blackout, a lot of it will be on foot. Um, you'll be in creeks and scrub and all that sort of thing. And um, st uh, stopping to pick up all your brass may not be 
may not be viable. So if you've got this stuff that's, you're not throwing away a La Poor Brass or you're not throwing away a Norma or something like that, which is worth about as much as a schooner of 4X gold per case, um, you, uh, it's not the end of the world if you drop one. So there we go. So I think I had about eight or nine of them. So that's done. And uh, we'll, set, we'll set them up, we'll put them through the dies next. Righto, we're back. Our, uh, our uh, Simplex single stage press set up. We've got our uh, Lee, Lee uh, full length resizing die in. Decapa pin expand a bit, all that in it. Um, we're not gonna deprime these things obviously. They've got prime, no primers in them. So basically what we've got is just, for what a better expression, a straight wall cartridge. That, can I see that? But just a, a brass tube. So what we're going to do is there, and we, the shoulder will get a very slight bump, and uh, and she should fall. So we use our, our one shot case lube. Now we're, we're working brass around in a die. Don't be shy with lube. Don't overdo it because if you overdo it with these things, you will actually get a hydraulic lock in there, and you've got a stuck case. So. There we go, don't be shy with it. Right, now, always give up in the dive into the squirt. Get out of the way, because we've only got the three, four, eight, nine to do. So, here we go. Bottom, I always give him two or three runs, just to run him through, just twist the case as we go. And there it is. It's a 300 blackout case. All formed from shitty old 223. So I'll do another one. Give him, oops, a bit too aggressive with it. There you go. And there we go. I'll finish these off and we'll uh, we'll come back and uh, do a final trim. Right, we're back. We're now done with this stuff. It's a lot of mucking around, but you know, you can do it all by hand and all that just fills in a bit of time, keeps you off the streets. So now we're going to put it through the uh, RCBS Trim Pro 2. Okay, we're going to, I've set this up for the length. It, it does uh, trim them up a little bit short. As I've already stated, that doesn't worry me if they're a tad short. In there. And that'll give him a nice, ooh, he turd. That'll give him a nice straight little cut. Nice, nice square cut in him. Do him again. There he is, nice straight cut, so. Now putting these through the dies, putting these when we form them up through the dies, a couple of the ones where the the uh, the throats, if you like, came out of tad square, a couple of runs through the dies and they're rounding up. And by the time you you drive a projectile into them and crimp them up a little bit, then fire them, they'll fire for them. They'll be right. Okay, so I'll do the rest of these and we'll get back for the last bit. Right here, we've uh, we've trimmed him all up. Um, he's four fire for We'll give him one last chamfer. all the little daggy bits off there's always going to be some daggy bits and we might uh might give these a bit of a measure actually and they're probably going to be short because if i remember rightly i did set that yeah uh, set the trim pro up it was cutting them a little bit short but as i say with cut them short i don't really mind i don't as long as they're not ridiculously short um as long as you've got enough neck to hold the uh the uh, the projectile and enough case to hold the powder, you're pretty right, you know. Um, we'll get away, yeah, we crimp them up. I, I, I always crimp anyway. Um, particularly with these ones, they're an unknown quantity. Well, let's have a, just a random measure of that one. There it is. 
he's come up at 34.63. And that is 62. That's that close. That's perfect. That's actually the bottom of your trim range. So I'm happy with that. So I'm, I'm more than happy with that. Oh, I'm going to give that one a miss because it's got a real, real daggy base on it. I don't know what's happened there. Actually, I'll, actually, I will, no, I will, I'll put it in and it might clean up a little bit in the, in the dry tumble, which we'll do later. So, uh, yeah, so I'll be, uh, just wash these and, uh, wash them and dry them and throw them in the dry tumbler. So, um, we'll catch you after this. We'll, the next time I'm back, we'll, uh, see it all come out of the dry tumbler and see the, uh, we'll see the finished result. So, uh, stick around and, uh, we'll talk later. Rightio, we're, uh, we're all done. We, uh, washed and dried them and, uh, then we put them through the uh, dry media tumbler for oh, about four hours, I think. We put a little bit of uh, new finish car polish, waxless car polish in with the uh, with the media. Roll it around for about four hours, and that's how they come up. Nice and shiny, nice and clean inside and out. Nice, nice and smooth. That's um, about as good as they're going to get. You'd have to agree. So basically, in this video, we've gone from that. We've gone from that. Your dirty old 2 3 to that. Your new flash and exciting, I'll try and get this better focus. Your new flash and exciting uh, 300 blackout. Exactly the same case, just chopped and necked. That's it, so uh, we're as good as done. So uh, I hope you, hope you liked the video. I hope you got something out, I sure did. Um, this goes to show with a, with a bit of effort, um, you can make something out of nothing. I, I, I can't find three out of blackout brass anywhere, and I've been able to basically make it out of a uh, scungy old two to three brass, a lot of which is throwaway, and a big lot of that I might have actually chucked. So it's a good it's a good way to uh, give your cartridges a second lease of life. They start to crack the necks, as I said earlier. Doesn't matter. You don't need the necks. So um, yeah, and it's what we do. To keep the world green, we recycle. So that makes us good. All right, so I'll put this one to bed. Three hundred blackout brass, done and dusted. Um, I hope you liked the video. As I said, uh, I hope you like subscribe to my channel. That'll be really good. Questions, comments, good, bad, and different. Happy to uh, happy to take on all comments. So uh, until next time, which uh, will in next time we will load some of this stuff up. That's going to be the next big thing. Because as I say, what's the worst thing that can happen? I'm down a bit of cheap, shitty 2 to 3 brass. So, not the end of the world. So, um, as I always say, you can tell your wife, you can tell your girlfriend. You can tell them both. It doesn't matter to me. Just go two clicks up. Ta-da.